Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing bradykinin-induced vasodilatation. So, so far, we have stimulated our endothelial cell with bradykinin. It's caused the production of IP3. IP3 has caused calcium waves. The calcium, uh, when it's high, uh, binds to calmodulin, and the calcium calmodulin complexes then bind to uh, the enos, which is um, suspended at the plasma membrane by those palmitoyl and myristoyl groups of the amino terminals, and also uh, by binding to the uh, carboxyl terminus of the, um, of the bradykinin-2 receptor. Uh, calcium calmodulin binds to that, uh, that activates it. We've also seen how uh, the ENOS then binds to uh, the heat shock protein 90, uh, which we saw uh, seems to be important because if you give the drug geldamycin, uh, sorry, geldamamycin, uh, then um, the uh, production of nitric oxide in response to bradykinin is abolished. Then what happens is the nitric oxide synthase starts producing nitric oxide by taking in the substrate L-arginine, breaking it down to L-citrulline and producing nitric oxide in the process. Right, so now what we want to see is what is that nitric oxide going to do? Well, it's going to diffuse out of the endothelial cells and it's going to diffuse into the uh, smooth muscle cells that surround the endothelial cells. Okay, now what is it going to do to those smooth muscle cells? Well, it's going to cause them to relax. Now, in order to understand how it causes them to relax, we need to know a little bit about smooth muscle contraction. So, in order to know about what causes smooth muscles to contract, what we need to know about is um, how... Um, well, we need to know a bit about smooth muscle structure, firstly. So, let me draw you a smooth muscle cell here. Okay, right. So, here's our smooth muscle cell. Now, the diameter, the, sorry, the dimensions of a smooth muscle cell are roughly that it's between 4 and 5 micrometers thick. So, its thickness is roughly 4 to 5 micrometers, 4 to 5 micrometers, whereas its length, this way from tip to tip, that is usually a couple of hundred um, micrometers. So, shall we say, um, hmm... Uh, a couple, well, we'll do 200 micrometers about that. Uh, but it may be, some, you know, that these aren't exact figures. It may vary somewhere around there. Okay, so, uh, smooth muscle cells are often said to have this spindle shape, where they're very thin at either tips, and then they've got a sort of thickening in the middle at their belly, and this 4 to 5 micrometers is their uh, maximal thickness, basically, when they're right at the centre of the smooth muscle cell. Now, smooth muscle cells are called smooth muscle cells because they do not have striations. If you look at a skeletal muscle cell or a cardiac muscle cell, uh, then you, uh, under the microscope, you will see uh, striations, you'll see lines. And these lines occur because of, the, uh, because of the uniform arrangement of the contractile units, uh, or the contractile proteins of uh, the muscle cell. That does not happen in smooth muscle cell. Instead, you have uh, contractile units and the proteins involved in those contractile units all over the place in a great big mesh. So, let me discuss with you the structure of a smooth muscle cell. So, you have within the cytoplasm of the smooth muscle cell lots of um, structures known as dense bodies, which are going to serve as the protein structures which we are going to attach the proteins of smooth muscle contraction to. So these pink structures that I'm drawing here, these are going to represent the dense bodies. Let me label one up. Okay, so we'll label this one here up as a dense body. Okay, now you also have con uh, proteins in the membrane uh, which, um, we, which can attach to um, contract our proteins. So let me draw some of these in. Okay. So these proteins in the cell membrane uh, which are going to attach to contract our proteins, these are known as attachment plaques. So this is an attachment plaque. Okay, attachment plaque. Right. Okay, so let me colour in the attachment plaque in a certain colour as well. So we'll colour it in blue. So in blue here we have the attachment plaques. Right, so 
What you have in smooth muscle cells is you have contractile units or um, the structures involved in contraction suspended between dense bodies and attachment plaques, or they could be suspended between two dense bodies. So let me show you what I mean by this. So basically, you'll have a certain protein filament known as actin filaments suspended from these dense bodies, like so. And again, from this one, you'll have actin filaments suspended as well. Okay, so uh, let me just label these up as actin filaments, and I think I'll colour them in a certain colour as well. So I'll colour them in green. Okay, now uh, you also have a protein disc in the middle here, which suspends another protein filament known as myosin filaments from it. So I'm just drawing two of these on each side so that it doesn't get too cluttered and messy. Okay, so I won't colour those in, otherwise with that it will look uh, messy. So let me draw it out bigger, basically, down here. So this is the contractile unit of uh, smooth muscle cells. So I'll show it larger down here. So let's have one dense body down here in pink, and we'll have another dense body over here. Then basically what you have is these actin filaments attached to the dense body, which project towards the other dense body. And similarly, this dense body will have actin filaments, which project towards its partner. Okay, so these are these green filaments. Now, I've drawn three of them. In reality, the dense body will support far more than three actin filaments. But to make the picture look easy and comprehensible, I'm only drawing three. Right. So these are actin filaments. So I just want to discuss with you a little bit more what an actin filament actually is. But let me just complete the picture first. So dense bodies, I just want to cover those in pink as well. So those are proteinergic attachments for the uh, actin filaments here. Okay, right, so what is an actin filament then now? Well, an actin filament is basically a polymer of actin monomers. So. Actin is a small globular protein that can polymerize with itself to form long strands, basically. So these little circles are actin monomers, which are all joining together, like so, to form a much longer structure. So just one of these circles is an actin monomer. So let me just color in one. That is an actin monomer. You have absolutely loads of these things all joined together, and that makes a sort of strand structure, an actin polymer, which is often then known as an actin filament. So an actin filament is loads and loads of actin proteins, or actin monomers as they're called, uh, joined together, basically. So this is an actin monomer. Okay. Right. So, um, these... Um, Dense bodies have actin filaments, uh, i.e. these polymers of actin monomers, attached to them, and they spread out towards one another. Then, in the middle, you have a disc of protein which also has filaments spreading out from it. Some which overlap with the actin filaments from this dense body, which we'll call dense body 1, shall we? And then, let's call this dense body 2, and these myosin filaments go in the opposite direction and overlap with the actin filaments of dense body 2. Okay, and we'll colour these in orange. So these are myosin filaments here. Okay, right, so let me discuss with you what a myosin filament is. So a myosin filament, like an actin filament, basically consists of absolutely loads of myosin proteins all joined together. So let me show you the structure of a myosin protein. A myosin protein basically consists of a fibrous tail, like so, with a globular head. So this is a myosin protein. So it has this fibrous tail, and it has this globular myosin head here. Okay, and the head is often referred to as either the myosin head, so this is the myosin head, or it's referred to as the light chain, myosin light chain. You will hear some people refer to it as the myosin light chain. Okay, now what happens is to create a myosin filament, like the one we've got up here, you join together absolutely loads of these myosin proteins, like so. And their fibrous tails all sort of join together to make the bulk of the filament, with the globular heads sticking out on the side, basically, like so. And this is what you get 
um, when you polymerize myosin together, you get one of these myosin filaments. And basically, the myosin filament has all of these heads sticking out. Now, myosin is a polar molecule. You will notice that I've drawn these heads with a, at a slight angle, they, uh, which is true to how they are. They have this, they're at this angle, basically. Now, I could either make a, ma make a, a myosin filament like this, or I could spin them 180 degrees and make you a myosin filament like this, okay? Where the heads were oriented in the opposite direction, basically. Now, these myosin filaments, which are stretching backwards towards uh, the actin filaments of dense body one, those will be of this sort. They will be have the heads oriented in the direction that they are going. And the myosin filaments which stretch this way towards dense body 2, their myosin heads will be oriented in this direction, so they will be of this second sort, basically. Okay, so I think that's an important concept to understand, that the myosin heads will be oriented in a different way on these two different strands, basically. Okay, right. So, how does uh, this muscle actually contract, then? Uh, well... Well, actually, firstly, before we discuss that, we need to discuss the fact that there's not just one contractile unit in this smooth muscle cell. There are many contractile units. So you'll have more of these. You'll have um, actin filaments coming off these um, attachment plaques as well. And then you'll have actin filaments going, stretching towards the attachment plaques from dense bodies. So you'll have contractile units, basically, between absolutely loads of these dense bodies and between the dense bodies and attachment plaques. So I'll just denote these as now these rectangles, which I'll uh, do in a green colour. Okay, so this represents an, uh, a contractile unit, this represents a contractile unit, this represents a contractile unit. Okay, so you have loads and loads of contractile units within this smooth muscle cell. So here's a contractile unit as well. Here's a contractile unit. Uh, let's have another one there. Okay, so they go on and on. You'll have a whole meshwork of attachment of these contractile units with, between uh, the dense bodies and the attachment plaques of the smooth muscle cell. Okay, now, how do these contractile units actually contract? Well, basically, what's going to happen is that the um, myosin filament is going to start climbing up the actin filament. So these ones are going to start climbing up these actin filaments here, going towards dense body 1. Whereas these myosin filaments on the other side, they're going to climb up the actin filaments towards dense body 2. Now the astute ones amongst you will notice that there is a problem with that. These ones are pulling in this direction, these ones are pulling in that direction, so what's going to happen? Well, the only solution is for the, dense, the, the myosin filaments to stay put and for the dense bodies to move closer together, basically. And indeed, that's what happens. So that's how uh, contraction is going to occur, basically. Okay, so uh, when these contractile units contract, what's going to happen? Well, they're all going to move their dense bodies closer together. And the contractile units between dense bodies and attachment packs are also going to contract. So you can imagine that if this meshwork goes throughout the entire cell, what's going to happen is when you contract the entire cell, it's going to get smaller, basically. Okay, so that's how um, smooth muscle cells contract. In the next video, we'll look at what, um, what triggers these smooth muscle cells to contract, and then we'll look at the actual mechanism by which the myosin filaments actually um, climb up the actin filaments.